Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and this is Cells as the Basis of Life, it's Module 1. This is kind of an extension on video number 10 where we were looking at active transport. In this particular video we're just going to concentrate on those processes of endocytosis and exocytosis just to give a quick overview of how these processes may also be important to active transport. So remember we're looking at the role of active transport. So how is it that we can move material uh, or particles that are required by cells or not required by cells against the concentration gradient. So there's a couple of different, uh, hopefully when you look at these words, you kind of see this common cytosis ending to the terms endo and exocytosis. And so we want to just extend our understanding a little bit. To recap, I guess quickly, we've looked at both passive and active transport processes. Passive transport processes include things like diffusion and osmosis. And active transport processes, things like our sodium potassium pump, require the addition of ATP, or require the addition of energy, usually in the form of ATP molecules. But there are other processes which can also be regarded as active transport processes. Sometimes a cell is going to use small structures called vesicles within the cell to help transport materials um, between the inside and the outside. And these are formed both from the internal membrane, so that complex um, series of internal membranes, which might include the nuclear membrane, which includes endoplasmic reticulum, which may include Golgi bodies, and may also include the actual cell membrane itself. There is a, a continuity of membranes within the cell, and these can actually be used to form small vesicles or, or little, little tiny structures, uh, which can be contained around certain types of particles and molecules, uh, and or can be used to help um, capture those from outside the cell and bring them inside. This requires energy, so any transport processes that involve these particular two processes that we're going to look at in this uh, video are regarded as active transport processes. So, so again, quickly, cytosis is just the folding of the plasma membrane around a particle to move it across the membrane. And so this is a general term that kind of says when the cell membrane is getting involved in this process, what it's trying to do is to actually um, develop a vesicle that is continuous with the uh, cell membrane in order to either expel, which is what exocytosis is, external, exterior, uh, exit, get it out of the cells, uh, or for endocytosis, which is where you actually want to bring material into the cell. So you can see that uh, through these two different processes, the uh, cell can take advantage of this continuous cell membrane, uh, or at least the continuous membranes that are part of the internal structure of the cell, in order to um, capture material that is outside the cell and also to release material um, that's unwanted that's inside the cell. There's a couple of different forms of endocytosis, and it's worth kind of just um, acknowledging them in passing. Um, some, like phagocytosis, we're going to look at in a lot more detail when we study diseases later on, and particularly look at how our body responds to diseases. But you can see three different types of endocytosis here, from um, phagocytosis to pinocytosis, um, to what's called a receptor-mediated endocytosis. And each of these is really about whether or not the membrane is extending out in the case of phagocytosis or in, in the case of pinocytosis, or whether there's actually some um, components on the surface of the membrane that are actually going to grab particular particles. Uh, and then the membrane is going to kind of fold in on top of itself. So, um, so there's a link, if you like, here that's happening between the type of infolding or invagination you get from pinocytosis uh, to that actual um, receptor linkage that occurs uh, in our receptor mediated endocytosis. So anything that's basically to kind of take a step back, anything that's trying to bring material from outside uh, the cell into the cell 
is an endo process. So it's from the outside bringing it in. And uh, there are a number of ways in which this can happen, a number of quite effective ways in which this can happen. And you can see all of them involve um, some extension or um, involvement of the cell membrane in engulfing particles, sometimes large particles, sometimes small particles. And obviously the size of the particle can actually influence which type of process occurs um, for each of these. Um, but you can see there's a couple of different examples of endocytosis. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is a process of trying to remove material from the cell. Now, sometimes this might be waste material. Sometimes it might actually be a particular chemicals that have been produced in the cell but are needed to um, be released into other parts of the body. Certain types of secretions, certain types of hormones, um, even certain, uh, certain types of proteins which may be produced in the ribosomes may be needed to be expelled from the cell and moved um, to other parts of the body. So what we're looking at in the process of exocytosis is going from inside the cell uh, to the outside. So we're trying to get material that's inside the cell to the outside. And often it's these little vesicles, these little um, tiny um, membrane bound sacs that are moving towards um, the cell membrane and going to expel their contents that way. We briefly talked about lysosomes as an example of a type of um, membrane bound organelle that's common to eukaryotic organisms. And they are the real cleaners of the cell. They really tidy up a lot of the materials that are no longer wanted by the cell. And they contain digestive enzymes which break down material. Now sometimes they'll break it into material that can be reused by the cell. Other times they'll have certain types of materials that are no longer useful and they'll want to expel them. Um, and as I said, sometimes they're actually producing materials where they're actually designed by other parts of the body. So the key here is looking at the fact that we can either have material outside the cell moving in through endocytosis, material that's inside the cell moving out, which is exocytosis, and both of these processes are active and they involve either internal or the external cell membrane in order for them to occur. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of the two key um, types of active transport processes and contrasts them with the passive processes we saw in diffusion and osmosis. Thanks for watching.